Oh, shut off. Thanks very much. What? West Brom are shite. What a lovely greeting, mate. <laughs> fucking haven't walked to this side of the fucking stage yet. Yeah. <laughs> you come here with your bloody hoopy jumper on. <laughs> Is it Boxing Day already, mate? <laughs> I've got you, mate. What's that shirt you got on there, mate, next to him? Oh, Luton Town. Oh. oh, don't. Don't, don't kick a team when they're down. <laughs> well, be a few months yet, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah, fucking, woo! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel we found a rapport. <laughs> See you together, you three, are you? No, we just fucking go... Yeah, chances of meeting two other Luton fans in any other building. <laughs> so what, what's your names, you three? One at a time now. <laughs> your? Matt. Matt. Welcome. <laughs> shit. Shit joke. <laughs> shit, it's a shit joke. No, it was a shit joke. Clap the shit joke if you like. <laughs> yeah, well done Matt. Good feed. And um, what in the middle? What you call, mate? Tr yeah. <laughs> Don't feel you have to rush into these responses. Have a bit of... It's probably... You've probably got it on a tattoo there somewhere. <laughs> Can someone read that for him? <laughs> what, what did you say? What's Tre there? That's one of your little Luton jokes, isn't it? <laughs> Fred there. And what about you, mate? What's, what's your... Your Matt as well? Ah. It could happen, I suppose. Actually, this is the, obviously this is the London Palladium. They've all been out here, Frank Sinatra and... Uh, who else? <laughs> no, lots of famous, all the big stars have been on this day. Who? Box Fizz have been on here. <laughs> Perhaps you should come up, Matt, and I'll do a bit of it. I'll rip your jumper off. Off. <laughs> this is the this is the royal uh, the royal box. This this uh, the lower one here. So you're in the uh, you're in the royal box. You you four people. What about that? Eh? <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> Not everyone can get in the royal box, you know. <laughs> Will Carl in maybe? <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he did. I don't, I, I don't believe he did. Because if you did, you'd tell people, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's the only reason I would. <laughs> oh, I would. I'd tell everybody, eh? I would, because uh, normally, if I have sex with anybody, the next day I have to tell every bloke I see. I'll stop him in the street. Hey, you should have seen me last night. We get off, please. <laughs> Come on, you could say to Diana, no, of course I wouldn't dream. I realise, you know, your position, I wouldn't dream of telling anyone. This is, you know, a very personal thing between you and me. But that day... <laughs> well, I'll be round the mate's house in the kitchen having a cup of coffee. Come on. You're going to pick up the tea towel and say, I fucked her. <laughs> it's a guess, but, you know... She's all right, I've got nothing against the old, uh, the old. Apparently, um, Charles got a bit, according to the stories, Charles got a bit worried, you know, and he, he went to see uh, the Duke of Edinburgh. This is not again, this is in, he reckons this is what happened. And he said, um, look, um, Father, I'm a bit worried about um, Diana because I don't think she loves me. I think she just married me so she can get into the royal family, nice cushy life, plenty of money, you know, and that's it. And the Duke of Edinburgh went, <coughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I was in, I was in uh, Norwich, um, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday this week, I was in, and I met Mike Walker for the first time. Is there anyone, by the way, before I go in, is there anyone that doesn't know anything about football, anyone nearby? Um, you, you, you don't. What's your name? Elaine. Where are you from, Elaine? From Fife. 
Good for you, eh? <laughs> oh, that's marvellous. Perhaps we can... Uh... No. So, um, you know, you're not interested in football line at all? You do know? What, what, who do you... A little... Well, I'll tell you what, if I, if I mention football tonight, Elaine, and I think it's a bit um, obscure, I'm not going to go on about it all night, but I'll, if I explain it to you, Elaine, then people who don't know about football will get it through, you know, so they won't get, but they might. And <laughs> so you're my sort of don't know about football person for tonight. Sort of a, sort of a Jimmy Hill figure. <laughs> Is that all right, Elaine? <clears throat> now, I, I met Mike Walker when I was in Norwich. We did, like, um, well, we met anyway. Mike Walker used to manage Norwich. You know Norwich, it's all sort of shire horses and tractors. <laughs> and then he moved to Everton, which is in, uh, that's like Liverpool. Have you, been, have you been there? Yeah, okay. Somebody cheered then when I said Liverpool. Yeah? Everton? Oh, I said Everton, but yeah, I meant in Liverpool. <laughs> right, okay. There's already people around there going, shit, why is that going? <laughs> Not regional stereotyping. Hey, how do we? <laughs> so we went to Everton, which is in Liverpool, right? And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a big move, isn't it, from Norwich to there? The bloke was sitting, trying to concentrate on the games. You know that little wooden dog out there sitting, watching. And he was obviously trying to concentrate, but all the time thinking, "Phew, I hope the car's all right." <laughs> yeah. And now they've got. So we've got some Everton fans. Who's, who's the Everton fans? You, mate. What do you think of Joe Royal, then? Great. Isn't his face too fucking big, though? <laughs> oh, Elaine, I, I, I wish I could bring him. He's got a fucking face on him. It's like... <laughs> it's the biggest face in Europe, easily. You see the player, when he's in the stands, you see the players running along and they're... <laughs> Day or what? <laughs> Is that bloke looking at us through a big fucking magnifying glass? <laughs> Joe's in the face like Oh, I've never seen anything like it in all my. You know, the, you know that little dog out there sitting in the wooden thing? He, he just about gets his face in there. <laughs> and there's like two blokes going, Joe, <laughs> put your face outside just for a minute. <laughs> Joe. When he chews, the dog out goes like ah. <laughs> and these round neck sweatshirts, they had to rip them off him at the end. <laughs> Stitch them on, rip them off. Could never, never get them over the face in a minute. Am I right, mate? Never get them over the face. <laughs> Southampton fan? <Yeah>. No. <laughs> but you like old Matt Letitia? <laughs> oh, old Matt, eh? He bloody good, isn't he? <laughs> People really like him. <laughs> now, um, so Matt, Matt, in case you don't know Matt Letizia, like, he's, uh, he's, um, have you heard of him? You've heard of him. See, even Terry Venables hasn't fucking heard of him. <laughs> he's, he's, um, bear with me. Two women down here going, oh, he's going to talk about fucking football. <laughs> But I, just, I just get this out of your system. He, he does, um, you might have seen him in Southampton. You know, he does a bit of stand up comedy now on, around the clubs. So have you seen that? Yeah, honest. He does about 90 minutes on stage, right? <laughs> During which time he probably tells maybe three jokes at the most. <laughs> but when he tells one, oh, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> He's not going to tell one at all tonight. He's had an off night, man. He's not going to tell a joke. 90 minutes. He's not... Right at the end, he tells a fucking cracking joke. <laughs> but most of the time, he just goes up and down the stage like this. <laughs> that was a great joke, Elaine, but... <clears throat> I, went to, I went to Cambridge. Um, yeah, I didn't. Um, when I say I went to Cambridge, I meant I went stayed in a hotel and left. I don't mean I went to Cambridge. And... <laughs> uh, but um, I went. I went there. And uh, 250 years ago in Cambridge, as a bloke born, who he was commissioned. He was a musician. He was commissioned to write the tune for Big Ben, right? <laughs> I don't mean like bong, obviously. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be a great job, that wouldn't. It? 
imagine when the mayor and everyone turned up to hear it and he said, uh, see what you think of this. And, oh, I kids, growling on me, see what you think. Bong. No, no, he wrote, he wrote the bit that goes, uh, down, 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 you know, you know that bit. Which, of course, has now become, shit grown, no fans, shit grown, no fans. You must know that one, lads. For all. I'll tell you the best football chat, and Elaine, you don't need to be a football fan uh, to, to appreciate this. I'm not, this is the last thing I'm going to say about football for a bit, right? But this is, this is not football, this is art. This is the most wonderful football chat you've ever heard in your life. And I'll tell you what it was, in the 70s, um, I support a team, Elaine, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> called, called West Brom. Right, have you heard, you've heard of that? Hey. Don't spoil it for Elaine. We're actually top of the Premier League at the moment. <laughs> I'm here, yeah. Uh, no, no, but we used to, well, in the 70s, whenever we went down to London, we always used to sing this chant, and it's, it's a marvellous thing. And it goes like this, right? I wish I was in London, I do, I do. Obviously, we didn't do the dance when we... <laughs> You don't want to be on the terraces at West Ham, I'll tell you, going. <laughs> or it's Stanley Knife time, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you a bit of visual age, you know. So, it went, I wish I was in London, I do, I do, I wish I was in London, I do, I do. I'd go down to Trafalgar Square and say to old Lord Nelson, fuck off, fuck off, <laughs> you one eyed cockney bastard. <laughs> No disrespect to anyone who's in front of Isn't it lovely, though, eh? Isn't it lovely? Very pop. I haven't heard it for years, but uh, in the 70s it was. Bing Crosby did it on an album. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. You want a cup bo 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 best Do you think of the lighting? Think of that. Do you think I went over the top with her? <laughs> Life support machines went off all over London. <laughs> hey, you'll be all right. You'll be back on in a minute. Oh, what a thought. I went to, um, to Edinburgh. Yes. You can say anywhere, can't you? Someone will say, yes, fucking <laughs> right. You from Edinburgh? Yes. Yeah. What, what's your name? Moira. Nice. Moira and Elaine. Perhaps you can have a bit of a, bit of a Scottish get-together after. <laughs> bit of shortbread, you know, on a chat. <laughs> I went to the festival. Now, it's very arty, the Edinburgh Festival, and this year there was a lot of nudity, which I've got nothing against, you know, in the, in the name of art, obviously. <laughs> and there was a woman who did this show, an hour-long show, talking about the works of Robert Louis Stevenson. She was completely naked, head to foot for an hour on stage. My goodness, I went, just, you know, curiosity. <laughs> it, was, it was nearly as big as this, the theatre. The poor soul, there were seven people in there. Six at the back, looking a bit embarrassed and wishing they hadn't come. Me at the front. <laughs> It was all right, I thought, you know. Could have been improved. Perhaps individual booths would have been my idea. <laughs> These people, they think they know best. <laughs> now, I actually considered, because this was a Palladium, so a bit of a, a special show, because, you know, London Palladium, I used to watch this when we were kids on the telly, you know. And so I thought, um, perhaps I could do it naked as a sort of a publicity stunt. No. <laughs> you say that, but no. It wasn't the sort of genital scene, normally is what you'd worry about. When I actually seriously come to consider being naked in front of, you know, a couple of, a couple of thousand people, what put me off was you can never be sure in life, can you, that, that your arse is 100% clean. <laughs> not 100%, no. 
can't, nobody, nobody, I don't mean to cast, nobody can. There's no one here tonight, put their hand on their heart and say you could eat your dinner, nobody. <laughs> And that knowledge would just undermine my confidence. So just set the edge off the performance. You could, you could hire a professional dresser who could, you know, check you over, maybe, you know. You know, with a lice comb. But even then, maybe one night, maybe out of spite, you know, he might send you out, shall we say, slightly matted. And that, I couldn't stand that. If I picked up the Evening Standard tomorrow night and it, there was a review in there and it said, saw Frank Skinner at the London Palladium, he was all right, but what spoilt it for me? <laughs> he turned round at one point and there was a bit of a rhino horn. <laughs> That's what it is, you know. Did you know that? Did you know that? that it, it, it is, um, it's not a rhino horn, it's not ivory, it's matted hair. That's all it is. That's absolutely true, that. We've learned something tonight. I reckon if you, if you didn't wash your ass for, say, a year, <laughs> you'd be able to charge fucking Land Rovers like <laughs> Now, anyway, in Edinburgh, um, and you'll know this, um, Moira, there's, there's, there's a little statue of a little dog called Bobby. And it's called Grey Friars Bobby. Some of you will have heard of this. And it's a lovely story, you know, attached to that statue. Bobby was a little dog, a real thing, that lived in uh, Edinburgh. And he had a master, and the master died. And they buried him. And little Bobby lay on that master's grave, and he lay there for years. Just going... <laughs> he was, you know, dead and gone, but he still stayed there with him. Look like you three, lots of ways. <laughs> It was a joke. <laughs> and he lay there, and, and, and he died on that very grave, that dog. And he became like a symbol of loyalty, you know. The, the locals are good person say, look, little Bobby there on the grave, you know. Before he died, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to pass and say, we should bury Bobby, he stinks. <laughs> look at him, he's gone. Look how flat he's gone, Bobby. Oh, he's like a fucking pyjama case. <laughs> You know what that did? Is that a starling that's come out of Bobby's eye? <laughs> no, anyway, became a symbol of loyalty. Now, the archaeologists have discovered recently, and I don't know if you know about this, Moira, they've discovered that they actually buried the bloke still holding the fucking lead. <laughs> Bobby's been there, was there for years like this. Excuse, excuse me. I'm not loyal at all, actually. I hated him. He used to fuck me when he was drunk. Sad story. There'd be cats going past saying, hey, Bobby, who keep going? You're not barking anymore. Uh, that was a thank you. That was a lovely uh, welcome when I came out. And if I remembered to thank you, it was a nice thank you for that. <laughs> it was. Um, we all need a bit of encouragement in life, don't we? You know, if you do something well, it's nice if people give you a bit of a pat on the back. I think my idea of perfect happiness is to have sexual intercourse with a woman, you know, and that's not it. <laughs> and and for her to say to me, you know, you were fantastic tonight. <laughs> Okay, you were gentle and loving, but at the same time, you were brutish. <laughs> and like a wild animal. You made me feel like a woman tonight. <laughs> Keep the money. No, put it away. <laughs> oh, many a true word. Now, I'm... So have we, um, have we got any, any couples in tonight? <laughs> but you two, you, you're going out. What, what, what's, uh, what's your name? So you don't want me asking, you don't want to have a little chat, do you? What, what's your name? Chris and Snick. 
Chris and Nick. I should point out you're at the back. <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me, but Nick, Nick is, is it Nicola? Is Nicola and Nicola and Chris. So how long? Can I ask how long you've been? Uh, three, years. three years. Cool. <laughs> Do you find when you first started going out, um, Nick? Did you find that, that Chris used to uh, used to try and impress you? He'd do things like maybe wash his hands after he'd been to the toilet. <laughs> soon wears off, doesn't he? <laughs> no, doesn't he? I find that, you know, after a couple of months, you might wash your hands whilst going to the toilet, but it's an accident. <laughs> I find in the early stage of a relationship, I don't know if you can remember back three years, but I'm, I'm very nervous. I can't relax. I can't be myself with, with the woman. You know what I mean? I'm trying to impress. I'm always putting on a false front. And, and they'll say, you know, you're not fucking me wearing that false front. <laughs> And I'll say, no, the, the horns are just a tickle, not, they don't hurt. <laughs> but eventually, and I'm going to get a bit romantic, I hope you don't, you don't mind that, you know. It's, it's, eventually, you might be just sitting there, and it creeps up on you a bit, you, and you'll remember this moment, you sit there together. And, I mean, speaking personally, I might think, you know, I really feel I can relax with this woman. I feel that, we've, you know, we're not just lovers, we're friends. And I'll say, you know, I'll say, I'll, I'll think we're getting on well, aren't we? You know, we share a sense of humour. Well, we have to, you haven't got one. <laughs> and I'll say, I think, I think it's going well. I just wanted you to know that I think, I love you, you know, and I care a lot about you, and I like being with you, and I just wanted to say that. So, um... <coughs> anal sex, what, 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 what do you... What do you... <laughs> well, it's a big moment, I'm not... But it's one we all have to face eventually, I find, right? And it's, there's, a, there's a reaction. A lot of people, you know, it gets a lot of bad press, I know, say. I think if people were more open, we'd have to be fairly open, obviously. <laughs> but it's that, you know, it's worth, it's at, worth, at least worth, you know, having a, having a chat about. I sense, already, I've mentioned it, you know, there's a slight tension in the air and some <laughs> people are going, oh, what did he say? <laughs> people will be getting back tonight to, you know, Maybe to Southampton or even Luton. <laughs> and they'll be getting back and saying, well, I'm, I'm so, maybe if it's a couple, the bloke will say, I'm, I can only apologise, Michelle. I've never been so embarrassed. I never thought for a second. <laughs> I, know, I mean, it's not like this on gag tag. <laughs> I never thought for a second. I'd hear anything like that. Like, you were embarrassed and I was embarrassed on your behalf. I am just, I apologise. I would never have taken, I ain't no sex. God. Still, now we're on the subject. <laughs> See, that's my verdict. Is that in every couple, not every couple, I'll give you a bit of a, a loophole, but in most couples, there's one partner who wouldn't mind giving it a bit of a try. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a dry run, see how it goes. <laughs> it's at least worth talking out. What have you got to lose just by talking about it? You know, I like to think maybe, you know, me talking about it tonight might trigger off a bit of conversation later on. <laughs> Hopefully not on the night bus, but it's up to you. <laughs> At least get it out of the way. Don't let it become a taboo to your relationship. <laughs> you know what they say about relationships? It's not what you say that does the damage. It's what you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any luck, why not drop us a line, you know, let me know how it's gone. Not on a postcard, preferably something sealed because <laughs> people talk. Don't they? But just chat about it, you know, and see what happens. A lot of people are voiding my eyes incredibly. Oh, I'm fucking asleep. <laughs> <clears throat> I, won't, I won't ask anyone, honestly. No, but it's, um, it's good to talk, as they say, you know. It's good to talk. <laughs> See, that's what the advert, the advert should be, a settee with a bloke sitting at one end, bit, bit pensive, bit troubled, <laughs> anxious. At the other end, a woman, puzzled, confused. <laughs> In the middle, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> Looking into camera and saying, he wants to fuck her out the arse. <laughs> Keep going, Frank. Oh, it, uh, <laughs> went out with a woman for about, oh, it must have been seven or eight months, and I was trying to pick me mum and trying to find the right time, because you don't want to rush these things. Word of advice, I mean, three years a bit much. Oh, joke. <laughs> but 
you want to pick your right moment, you know, and, and, and one night I said, look, um, I something I, I want to ask you. I said, no, you can say no. I said, I'll fucking sulk, but you can't say no. <laughs> I said, um, do you, um, would, would you mind if, if tonight, maybe we just, we tried, um, we tried, we tried anal sex, what do you think? And she looked at me and she said, what again? I thought I must get the light fixed in that bedroom. <laughs> I don't know where I'm working half the time. Isn't it? Now a lot of women, and you know, a lot of women quite sensibly will say, and prepare yourselves for this, they'll say, is it dangerous? Now it's a good question well put. <laughs> but here's my advice to any women here. If you want to find out if anal sex is dangerous, there are books, there are brochures, there's a citizen's advice bureau. <laughs> I wouldn't bother asking, if you want an honest, objective, fair-minded answer, don't bother asking a naked man with his knob in one hand and some Johnson's baby lotion in the other. <laughs> Do you honestly believe for one second that that bloke is going to go, Oh, dangerous, I never thought of that. <laughs> Best, best not risky, I'd wear <laughs> Leave that. Don't think so. I think that bloke would probably go, dangerous? <laughs> Do I hear right? <laughs> Dang. God, no. I've done it loads of times. Never hurt me. It's not really, it's fine. It's, come on, come, 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 come on, come on. <laughs> and he'll say, look, tell me if it hurts, I'll stop straight away. <laughs> Even if he wanted to, you, you can't do it. You can't. See, I, I'm quite a superstitious bloke. I believe in ghosts and things like that. And I believe, I believe in the arse hair demon. <laughs> Have you heard of this? You, you heard of this, Chris? No. The arse hair demon, Chris, is a little invisible nymph who comes into your bedroom when you're having sex. Just like you're frightened. <laughs> and the slow bit at the beginning, you know, when the black, that, you know, the bit in the manual where it says, don't thrust, just roll. <laughs> it's the bloke's way of saying, look, you know, the physical thing's only part of it for me. <laughs> Chris, you're looking at me, uh, <laughs> as if to say, slow bit. Do I remember that? No. <laughs> Does exist, apparently. And uh, I'm saying, Nikki, you're laughing a bit too much at that joke, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> no, it's, I think what's terrible, if you're a bit quick, we're all a bit quick occasionally, but sometimes, if it's the first time you've had sex with someone, women think, oh, but he's like this all the time, and that gives you a bad reputation. I went out with a woman for about, oh, about three days, and I got a bit lucky. <laughs> no, and uh, I ended up, we ended up in bed, you know. And uh, afterwards, I was lying back having a cigarette, and I said, uh, I said, that was fantastic. I said, did you always do it doggy fashion, or was that just tonight? And um, I realised that she was just plumping the pillows in anticipation. <laughs> if looks could kill, I'll tell you. She gave me, she just looked at her, she just looked. <laughs> what was fantastic? I said, well, just fantastic um, plumping on the old pit. Oh, terrible. Now, there is a slow bit though, Chris, I've read about it. So, during that slow bit, right, the bloke's there like this, and he's just, he's barely moving. <laughs> barely moving. He's thinking, I can do this all night. <laughs> At that moment, the arse hair demon comes in. <laughs> and he just, just grabs the bloke arse hair like that. Just grabs it. You, you feel it go taut.
And it's like that man, and the bloke's at his most arrogant when he thinks, oh, I'm really in control now. Look at me, eh? One of these young kids, look at me going. It's at that moment when the arse air demon, or the arse air goes, go, 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 Nobody can stop whether it hurts or not. They can't stop then. Lightning could strike the fucking roof, I'm telling you. Fucking God, come out. Roof's on fire, but we'll have a look after. Can't stop. I could barely stop then, to be honest with you. I should point out, to be fair, that um, in case you've got plans now for tonight, that um, anal sex is actually illegal in England. Oh dear. <laughs> that didn't go down very well at all, did he? <laughs> Certainly men and men can do it. Um, it's all right for men and men, but not men and women, apparently. Um, which seems a bit unfair to me. I've got nothing against, you know, men and men doing it, obviously, you know. A couple of drinks, for okay. <laughs> Nothing against that, but it just seems a bit unfair that they can do it legally and men and women can't. You know, that, that seems like you know, one area of society. I don't see why men and men should be able to do it and not men and women. Sod's law, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but it spoils it. it spo I'm quite a law abiding citizen in, in most ways, and it spoils it for me. I remember one night I was having anal sex, right? Do you know that might be the first time that sentence ever been said on this grand old stage? <laughs> Backstage, three or four times a night, I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> on the stage. A little bit of history there. I was having anal sex one night and suddenly I was overcome with guilt. At, the, you know, the, the legal implications. And it really spoiled it for me, honestly. It, it, in the end, I tapped this woman on the shoulder. I said, I'm, I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to make a citizen's arrest. <laughs> And she looked, she looked round like that. <laughs> she went. She said, stop messing about, Frank. I'm trying to do me fucking homework. <laughs> Home university, obviously. She's in her late like, 20s. <laughs> I don't know what you people think I am. Anyway, I said, look. I said, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to drive you down to the station. And off we went. A bit like a wheelbarrow race in many ways. <laughs> So be careful, it's, uh, I don't want you to encourage you to do anything that's illegal. Strange thing, I'll tell you what's a strange thing, and I don't want to make light of this, because it's a terrible thing in many ways, but this Fred West case. <laughs> what do you make of that? What do they think of that in Luton? <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Matt Wan, Matt Jumper? <laughs> do you think, do you think, um, probably they did he? <laughs> Sorry? Bit touch and go. <laughs> yeah. I suppose there's a brief summing up, that's... <laughs> Do you know you can actually, um, this is you can buy their, ho their houses for sale, that, that Cromwell Road house. Um, 65 grand, I think it is. And you can't, you're not allowed to view it, because they think that horrible, you know, ghouls will go just to see it. But you can actually, you could buy it, someone here could buy it. And I thought, God, what a fucking horrible place to live that would be. <laughs> Gloucester. <laughs> Shit, isn't it? Nothing to do. And that house in particular, I mean, there's a 20-foot drop now off the back stair. <laughs> I can't tell you. Whee! Shit! <laughs> so I don't want to uh, go down into bad taste. That would be a terrible thing. I'll tell you what, now New Year's Eve is on the way. And we know what we'll all be doing New Year's Eve. We'll be playing our favourite game, won't we? You must have played that game. You put ten quid on the table in the pub, get a gang in, and you pick which celebrity is going to die first that year. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that a great game? 
I've played that all since I was a teenager. Every year we get together, you know, and we've had some laughs, I tell you. The money I've seen thrown away on the Queen Mother, I couldn't... <laughs> year after year after year. And the trouble is, it's like having the same numbers on the lottery every week. Once you've had the Queen Mother once, you must stick with her. Because <laughs> you think, well, you know, I'll stop this year and I'll feel... And that'll be that. I'll be kicking myself. I had a mate called Al, used to back her every year without fail. We'd say, we'd used to pull his leg. We'd say, Al, call your mother again, is he? Put it on the list. And he'd go, well, let me down again last year. <laughs> oh, go on. Surely this year, he'd say. Surely. One year, this is absolutely, honestly, this is true. A mate of mine, he backed Leonid Brezhnev, the Russian leader, right? Come about March, Brezhnev got very ill. Of course, my mate was chuffed. <laughs> 120 quid we're talking about here, right? So we were all worried sick, the rest of us, right? And, uh, but good old Brezhnev, he, uh, he made a bit of a game of it. It lasted for months, right? Kept it going. And we were cheering him on, the rest of us. You know, come on, Leonid, you all can do it. <laughs> a friend of mine sent him fucking grapes. <laughs> so I was watching the news one Sunday morning, and um, news come on. And it said, uh, Leonid Brezhnev, the Russian leader, still very poorly. I thought, oh, bollocks. <laughs> And then he said, late news coming, oh, no. Jack Howarth, who plays Albert Tatlock in Coronation Street, passed away this morning. I went, fucking yes, me! <laughs> he, he wasn't even fucking ill when I backed him. <laughs> he hadn't got a complete outsider. <laughs> hadn't got a head cold. I just, we had, we got our first ever colour telly. I saw him on colour telly and I thought, purple nose, heart trouble. As a guess. <laughs> One year, one year, a mate of mine, he backed Arthur Askey. And Arthur Askey had a leg amputated, and this mate tried to claim £2.50. <laughs> All true. So, um, is there any films? Did you, you get to the pictures, you two? Have you seen, um, have you seen Dances with Wolves? Have you seen that? Didn't like it, Nick. Oh, like a good cowboy, me. You, see, you saw it as well, Chris? No, Nikki went on her own. <laughs> that's how it starts, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> In case you were, if you haven't seen it, Chris, basically, Dances with Wolves is about a bloke called Dances with Wolves, and he's called Dances with Wolves because he dances with wolves. It's quite complicated. It's, it's a Red Indian thing, you know, and people are... Um, they don't call them by names like Chris or Nick or Frank or Matt. They call them names like, you know, what they do. They'd be like, you know, where's a stupid jumper you'd be called Matt. <laughs> um, perhaps a bloke with a Luton shirt would be called Flog's a dead horse. <laughs> and it saves a lot of bother, because often if you meet people, you know, the first thing you do is ask what they do for a living. Whereas, you know, if you, to, if you went to a Red Indian party, there'd be no need, because you'd meet someone, he'd say, hello, I'm Dances with Wolves. And you'd say, oh, Dances with Wolves. Must get a bit lonely out here, then. <laughs> and he'd go, yeah, very good. <laughs> Can I get you a drink at all? Um, Fox Buffaloes. <laughs> Can you get, um, smells like knob cheese, a martini. <laughs> Save time. <laughs> Just think if Jane Torval had been a Red Indian, she'd be called Dances with Cunts. <laughs> Perhaps. I'm, I'm very interested, though, with those, um, with those, uh, in those foreign cultures. Um, the Australian Aborigines I find fascinating people. I got interested, I saw a film called, um, you might have seen this, Walkabout with uh, Jenny Agatha. Marvellous film, that. Oh, those fabulous shots of the bush. <laughs> and it got me, I read a book about the Aborigines. Now, this, this is a fact. Now, the Aborigines are obviously a noble race, but some very different opinions and very different social values. For a start off, they have sex um, in front of each other. And it's not considered uh, crude or impolite or anything. It's just a normal, natural function. We're all touchy about it. They don't care. They'll shit in front of each other. Again, it's not regarded as anything bad, you know. And why should it be? But, strangely, when they eat Aborigines, 
they, when they eat, they go and eat on their own in private behind a rock somewhere. They regard eating as a very private thing. Now, that seems stupid. To, I, I eat in public a lot, you know. But come to think about it, I wouldn't eat in public quite so much if there was people there having a shit. <laughs> Often, if you follow these things through, there's a, there is a logic, isn't there? <laughs> I'd, be, uh, I'd be too shy to, uh, to do it myself. I'm quite, I am quite a shy bloke. I get shy, and you'll laugh at this, but I, honest, I, I get shy. If, I'm, if I've had a bath, and I'm, obviously I'm naked, and I'm maybe toweling off, <laughs> and the dog comes in the bathroom, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> don't they stare? I could come in and go, uh, hello? Oh, kept that quiet, didn't you? Purple. What's wrong with bright red all of a sudden? He'd lean with one paw on the back leg like that. Not really. And he'd say, oh, and, and you clean your bollocks with a flannel. What, you got back trouble? Or... <laughs> really annoyed me. Made me feel self-conscious. To get me own back, I tell you, we had, he's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, our dog. When he shit in the garden, he pulled the funniest face <laughs> you've ever seen. Oh, I could have sold tickets. He used to get settled there. He used to do this thing with his mouth. He'd sort of go... <laughs> Laugh. If you, I'd pull up a deck chair sometimes. Get settled. <laughs> It was a hot day, you know. Maybe a cold drink. Even a tip top sometimes. <laughs> Fabulous. Anyone got any dog owners in? You not got you got a dog in Southampton? What sort, what sort of dog's there? Jack, Jack Russell. Would you say he was uh, intelligent? <laughs> you haven't thought about it? Because a lot of people say their dogs, you know, are incredibly. You know, people say, uh, oh, he understands every word I say, you know. And you think, nah. <laughs> Ozzy Ardiles probably says that about his dog, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The dog's going. I don't think they're into. I really don't think they're into. I don't respect the intelligence of any animal that is surprised by its own farts. <laughs> I mean, you know, didn't you? You have an inkling. You know someone's on the way, you know. You'd, uh, our dog would sit in the, in, in the living room like this. <laughs> no idea. No fucking idea. When he was 15, he went deaf. Then he'd sit in the kitchen like this. <laughs> what? <laughs> no idea. Fat bastard he was, a big pink belly. He used to lie on the hearth and he used to dream. Right? And I ate it when they dream. He made noises when he dreamt that he never made, never made when he was alive, he, when he was awake, rather. <laughs> he'd, he'd like, one paw would start going, like that, and I think, no, he's going to be dreaming in a minute. Maybe an ear would flap. And he'd go, Surface, Rob. Or what? <laughs> well, a friend of mine said the thing is, Frank, so they dream they're chasing a rabbit. But no! This dog's lived in West Bromwich for 15 years. He's never seen a fucking rabbit. <laughs> so it's in Bugs Bonny perhaps once on a video. <laughs> 
we had trouble. I'll tell you, there was an alley at the back of our house, and couples used to use it for uh, sexual liaisons. I, I don't mind, you know. But I got suspicious. I saw a skid mark on one of the walls, and I thought. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Sherlock when I get going. <laughs> and live and let live, that's me. But what they used to do, they'd use condoms, it's obviously a good thing, you know, it's in the 90s. But they'd use condoms, just leave them on the floor in the alley, and our dog would go in there. And it's, <laughs> it's not nice, is he? He used to chew them. <laughs> oh. I don't know why, I suppose, you know, to a, to a dog, it's like chewing a locket. Noise, but 15 years, never had a sore throat to my knowledge. <laughs> Worth knowing, isn't it? I ain't gonna be tickly one night. Can't <laughs> find the all night chemist as a standby. <laughs> I didn't mind him chewing, because you know, dogs, I, the hygiene thing didn't bother me, because dogs will eat anything, nothing seems to affect them. I just thought, well, if the neighbours smell it on his breath. <laughs> Oh, my name will be Dirt. Around there. <laughs> Staffordshire Bull Terrier, anyway. I say. Ugly bastard. <clears throat> Very ugly dogs, they are. Some ugly people about, aren't there? I don't mean, I can't see any here right now, but I mean, I'm no oil painting, but I mean, some, I mean, rancidly fucking ugly people. <laughs> I don't mean people looking at you think, oh, I don't think. I mean, fucking, oh, seriously. <laughs> oh, dear, some of the people you see knocking about. There'll be some in tonight. I can't see it at the front, but at the back, there'll be, and they never know, you know. Oh, my dear. There'll be some blokes in the back with a face like a lizard's cunt. He'll be sitting there. <laughs> and he'll be saying to his mate, yeah, he's right, there are some fucking ugly guys. <laughs> now, I don't want to be cruel, you know, because you know, we've all got across the bear, but I just think that there's a place for everyone in the world, and surely the place for very, very ugly people <laughs> is blind date. <laughs> Because what's gone wrong with Blind Date now is everyone on it is good looking, and that's terrible, that's rubbish, Blind Date. Blind Date without the ugly person is like Russian roulette without the bullet. <laughs> when you're watching Blind Date, the greatest pleasure, admit this, the greatest pleasure is from going, go on, pick that bastard, go on. <laughs> I don't want the fucking smile off your face. <laughs> your ideal contestant for Blind Date has got quite a sexy voice, a bit of a sense of humour, and a face like a fucking pork scratching. <laughs> that's what you want, isn't it? Hey, that's that. You know that moment, right? You know when Blind Date went, say if it's the bloke picking, and he's picked his number, and the other two women come round the, the screen, first of all, and he says that, and then, they, then there's the big reveal, right? And he's there, and one woman comes round, she might be quite nice looking, and he has a bit of a hug, and then he does that jokey thing when he goes to follow her off, you know. <laughs> she's a bit of a character. <laughs> and still, they've got whack. And then the other woman will come around and have a bit of a hug and she'll go, and then the screen goes back and there's the one he's picked. And if you look closely, some weeks, he's not that keen. <laughs> and if you watch closely, he'll smoke, there'll be a twitch. Just, just, just go. <laughs> and you think he doesn't like her very much, he's not very keen, ooh. Now that's not good enough for me. When that screen goes back, I want to see fucking vomiting. <laughs> Do you want to uh, pick a car? Oh, you've dribbled on that, you ugly bastard. <laughs> you've got a jade cloth, the pork scratching's dribbled on the fucking car. <laughs> That's entertainment, isn't it? <laughs> Their idea of a bit of novelty on Blind Date is some weeks they have some very old people on. <laughs> and the idea is we'll all say, oh, look, come, come here, they've got, they've got some old people on Blind Date. Oh. <laughs> Fancy it there, I eh? still getting dressed up, you know, making a bit of an effort. Look, bless <laughs> Oh, look, oh, oh, cute. In fact, what we tend to say is that they've got some old people on blind deck. <laughs> and you're supposed to wank to that. <laughs> it doesn't, they don't want to be on there. A lot of them, they don't know where they are. Oh, they're very old ones. <laughs> 
they don't know where they are. They're sitting there thinking, hold on, behind the screen, but not on a bedpan. <laughs> and also, look, I'll tell you this, and this will shock you. Prepare to be stunned. But I think you've got a right to know. The questions and the answers on blind date are given to the contestants in advance. <laughs> well, sorry, but... And what gets me is that just they're, in the, they're in the dressing room, just waiting, you just pick, pick off you go. Just one big pile. So to someone who's 60 or 70 or 80, they just pick it from the same pile as someone who's 18, 19, 20. That's ridiculous. That's not fair, is it? Surely the people of this age have earned the right to have their own proper old people's questions, you know, as a mark of respect. I want to see an old person sitting on blind date saying, right, here's me, here's me first question. Now, if, if we went to a tea dance, right, and I shit myself. What, what would you do? <laughs> and that, that's a question for, for number three. Right? And then number three would have one of them answers, all the ponds, you know, they love a pond on blind date. Oh, they're pond crazy. <laughs> and the person would say, the old bloke would say, well, you know, my, I would not be a deterred. <laughs> Or, 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 or belled over, right? Because <laughs> I know there are plenty more feces in the sea. <laughs> and besides, I lost me sense of smell in an air raid. <laughs> now, I don't mean any disrespect. I see one or two people in the audience tonight, maybe over 60, and I'm very, very thank you for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, it, it gives me a thrill. I love and respect old people. I, they confuse me. I'll tell you what confuses me more than anything. And maybe when I get older, I'll understand this. But if I walk down the street as I am now, right? I walk down the street, I'm just walking like this. I don't walk like that often. <laughs> And I see on the floor, you know, on the pavement, maybe a little shoe or a little glove. I think, well, some kids probably throwing that out of a push chair. You know, if the parents want it, they'll, they'll come back for that. I'll carry on. I never get any urge whatsoever to think, oh, little, little glove. I'll put a shoe there, put that on that, put it on that little wall. <laughs> Surely, really, for me, is I see it on the floor and I think, well, the parents will be back home and I think, little Johnny's thrown his glove out of the pushchair. That will have landed on the floor. <laughs> so we'll look there. I don't think, oh, he's thrown his, his glove out of the pushchair. That will have landed on a railing like that. <laughs> it's a million to one shot. What is the, the, the logic, seems to be? If, if you find something that's lost, Put it a bit higher up. <laughs> I think all this dog looks lost here, mate. I'll put it on this garage roof. <laughs> 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 Dog's thinking, thank fuck you didn't see them railings. <laughs> I wonder if this is what, has this, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been on a double decker bus on the top deck? And when you stop at a bus stop, you look down at the corrugated roof of the bus stop. There's always a fucking shoe and a coat. <laughs> a shoe and a coat can, that's what's there. And I wonder if, mate, it's always like a grown up, a proper, you know, an adult shoe. And I wonder if maybe an old person might find, a, you know, an adult shoe. <laughs> and think, oh, do you look at that for a shoe. <laughs> that's a bigger. That's what, maybe eight and a half, nine. Proper man shoe, that is. No. This little war hardly seems adequate. <laughs> we man shoe like this. Maybe this bus stop. Yeah. Seems proportionally more sensible. Well, it's going to be a bit lonely up there on its own. Or maybe this coke can will give it a bit. 
As I say, I don't have a go at old people because I'm, you know, I'm not getting any younger myself, let's face it, and uh, in my 30s now, you know, I'm moving fast, I'll tell you. How old are you, mate, if you don't mind me asking? 34. What's your name? Malcolm. Do you find Malcolm, this is a personal question, you don't have to answer it. No, really. Do you find, Malcolm, as you got into your mid-30s, that sometimes you're ready for sex, <laughs> but you're not ready for sex? <laughs> you know that. Has that ever happened to you, Malcolm? It has. Good for you. It made me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> now, it should never happen to me. It, happens to, it has happened to me, and it's, it's not fair. Because... Of all the people in the world that shouldn't happen to, me, I'm number one. Because I tell you, in foreplay, I am the most talkative, excited bloke in the world. I'm always saying things like, oh, I'm going to give you such a fucking dead on. <laughs> what a fucking, what a fucking, I'm going to give you, my lady. Oh, oh dear, I have to knock your fucking fillings out. Oh, oh, oh. What a, what a, what a, what a, oh, what a, I'm going to, shall we just hold each other? <laughs> I'll tell you something, Malcolm, and I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to embarrass me, and I'm going to. It's never happened, and I don't want to get coarse now at this stage, when I've sort of... <laughs> when I've held back for so long. <laughs> but, I, it's, you know, it's never happened to me when I've been masturbating. Isn't that strange? <laughs> what do you... Well, I won't ask you. <laughs> you didn't get them glasses from watching telly, let's put it that way. <laughs> It's never, honestly, if I ever, if I ever think, oh, I've got time for a quick, it's there. No problem, like a rock. No trouble. <laughs> honestly, I, I was watching, there was a film on uh, the other night, and it wasn't pornography, just like a bit of a dirty film on Channel 4. And it was good. I just, you never know with those films when the dirty bits are going to come, do you know? <coughs> so, you have to be sort of, um, sort of halfway up the runway. <laughs> Not rigid, but rubbery, you know. It's a similar technique to those blokes that spin the plates on this. Just... <laughs> just keep it, just keep the speed going. And I was having a lovely time, and I don't mind admitting I was enjoying myself. But the thing was, we had people round. <laughs> and I don't, they didn't like it, I could tell. <laughs> In fact, I don't think they'll buy the flat now. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I don't want to get into that subject. It's a bit embarrassing. I just make the point because I've never had that sort of, you know, impotence thing while I've been asked. Though I have to say, we live in an age now, right, where they can put a man on the moon, and yet you cannot buy a bed with a headboard with a toilet roll holder fitted. <laughs> Is that progress? <laughs> I don't think so. There's nothing worse, is there, Malcolm? Think back to it. We'll, we'll, we'll assume you don't do it anymore. <laughs> think back to when you were a young man, Malcolm. You know, we all admit that maybe you were 14 or 15. You used to get up a bit excited and you'd do the... You're with me on this. You'd do the bit. <laughs> and you'd wake up and think, oh, I haven't got anything to... Oh, my God. And you used to have to crab walk across the landing like this. <laughs> Morning, Mum. <laughs> Nightmare. <clears throat> so, as I say, I, don't, I only bring it up to make the point that I've never had the impotence problem whilst masturbating, which suggests, obviously, it's not me. <laughs> worst thing, I'll tell you, the worst thing is when sometimes you... Um, you, 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 you're ready, you put a condom on, and then it goes. That's a nightmare. One minute you've got a rubber truncheon, and suddenly you've got a walnut whip in an oxygen tent. <laughs> no chance. And what breaks my heart, and that's been so long ago, I tell you, when I was a young man, I could have sex at the drop of a hat. So, somebody dropped a hat, I was bloody in there. <laughs> Straight through the Wranglers, didn't bother me. 
But nowadays, everything has to be just, just so, you know, for me to be able to, uh, to perform. I find that uh, the room, you know, has to be at the right temperature for me. <laughs> and if we've got a bit of music on, the music centre has to be just the right volume, just settled, has to be in the right mood. I have to have eaten four hours before. <laughs> it's sure, I can't ejaculate on an empty stomach anymore. Unless it's, you know, somebody else's. <laughs> Really nice crowd and I've really enjoyed talking to you. God bless you. Cheers. Good night. I better get out there quick. It was just dropping, wasn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Now, it's, it's funny, you know, when, when you've been doing this job for a few years, you can, standing back there, you can tell the difference between uh, the men's applause and the women's applause. You can hear the difference. And the men's applause then seemed to be saying to me, come back, Frank, for a couple of minutes, by all means. <laughs> but um, no more that impotent stuff, all right? <laughs> It's not fucking funny. <laughs> and basically, we don't want to know. <laughs> fair enough. I should point out, to be fair, that um, I have uh, spent, you know, about 20 or 30 years ravaging my body with drink, which just hasn't helped. I used to be a tar- Do you drink much, Malcolm? Pints. Pints. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a bit of a lad, eh? Pints, fuck it. That's those big ones, isn't it, Malcolm? <laughs> So how many points would you have, say, on a, on a night when you were, you know? Eight or nine? Whoa! Have you ever... I know it's, it's, it's become personal questions night for you, Malcolm, but have you ever... Uh, have you ever um, had a bit too much and... I won't even ask you. I'll tell you what I have. I have. This is true, and, I, and this is a warning to anyone here who, who finds their drink problem getting a bit much. I used to, when I was a drinking man, piss the bed. <laughs> Two or three nights a week. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Oh, no, isn't it? I'm not, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm... <laughs> this is how far it's gone with me. And I know some comedians say this is a true story, and it isn't, but this is honestly a from the heart true story, right? I have pissed the bed whilst in it with a woman. <laughs> Can you get any lower? Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine how that feels? And it was at her place, which didn't help. <laughs> been going out about three weeks. You know, I didn't know well enough to say, if I wake up, guess, guess what's happened. <laughs> but, you know, we haven't reached that level. <laughs> and she went to Birmingham Polytechnic. She's a nice woman. I, w- I won't name her. But um, I woke up and I thought that, I'll, oh no. <laughs> How am I going to get around this? And I'll tell you this is what I did. And, and this is pathetic, but I'm just telling you, not, I'm telling you anyway. I started going, uh, Oh, I was sweating. Was I sweating? <laughs> Honestly, it was fucking dripping off me last night. <laughs> and she looked at me. She was no fool. She looked at me and she said, uh... <laughs> She said, I-, I don't think this is sweat. <laughs> and I was cornered. I was absolutely cornered. And, this is, and you'll hate me for this. I'll tell you honestly what I said. But, you know, I was trapped. <laughs> And I'm not proud of this. I said, um, I said, I, th- I think you're right, actually. I said, uh, I think you've pissed the bed. <laughs> don't clap, don't clap, for God's sake. You'll hate yourself tomorrow. <laughs> oh, dear, what a way. I- I've spoken in, uh, in interviews about that, because uh, I was a real, a real drink problem, and I spoke about it in interviews. And I noticed when they said to, um, you know, Marilyn Monroe reporters, when they said, like, you know, uh, what do you sleep in? And she said, Chanel number five. <laughs> they go, oh. <laughs> When they asked me what, um, <laughs> what I slept in, and I said, my own piss. <laughs> Didn't go down so well, I found it. Let, let, let's go, come on. Oh, that was... Uh... 
And people who've never pissed the bed, there might be people in here who've never done it. <laughs> if you've never pissed the bed, people think, if they've never pissed the bed, they think, oh, you must wake up. You've got a hangover, obviously. And you wake up and go, oh, God, what day is it? Oh, piss the bed. <laughs> no? No, you wake up and go, Daisy. Oh. Piece of bed. Probably the weekend then, I think. That made me a bit of a lion. Eh? You snuggle. That's what you do. You snuggle. Oh, unbelievable. And, and I, used to, um, I used to have to sleep with a plastic bowl at the side of my bed because I was sick every morning without fail. Every morning. And the thing is, if, you, if you've been out, you'll know this, Malcolm, if you go out at night and, and, you, and you, you, you're sick at night while you've been drinking, it's great. <laughs> Leave the pub and I say, uh, be at the match tomorrow, Frank. Yeah, I'll be there. Be there about that <laughs> But the next morning, oh my god, there's nothing there, is there? Nothing there. Most of it's in the fucking mattress for a start off. <laughs> I used to drag myself, drag myself to the side of the bed, like a bit of plastic bag. And I'd be like, This little bit of yellow stuff <laughs> tastes like nothing I'd ever tasted <laughs> in my life. I thought I'd never fucking drink that. <laughs> That's poison. <laughs> and then I realised what I was doing, I was straining so much, I was drawing the piss out the mattress. <laughs> through the pores in the skin by osmosis. <laughs> Possibly. That was that. <laughs> Look, I'd like to... Um, um, uh, leave it up with, with uh, um, a true, uh, completely true thing that happened to me when I used to live in Birmingham. Before I started doing comedy or anything, I used to go to a mainstream uh, club in a place called Witten. And um, it's not far from Villa Park, actually. And it's, it was a, a club that used to have, like, not so much comics, semi professional singers would be on, you know. And I love all that stuff. And I was probably the youngest person who used to go to the club. It's all women with blue rinses and that, but I liked it. Now, one night, completely true story, this bloke came out to sing and he got to. Um, I remember red patent leather slip-on shoes. And a bit of a perm, but <laughs> to his credit, it, it was post Lenny Bennett. It, it, it had loosened out into a sort of a Roger Daltrey. <laughs> you know, it stuck his neck out a bit there. <clears throat> and he did that song, you know that song that goes, You're just too good to be true. I can't take my eyes off of you. <laughs> did all that stuff, right? And it's, I love that song, but if you remember, in the middle of it, there is a fucking big bit, right? When the band goes da 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 and the singer has to go, oh, pretty baby. This fucking note high, higher than that, right? So when you start that song, you want to start down here, right? <laughs> Give yourself somewhere to go. <laughs> Think ahead. You want to come out and go, you. Just too good to be true. <laughs> this bloke, red patent leather shoes, loose perm. <laughs> You're just too good to be true. <laughs> the whole audience went, he'll never fucking make that man. <laughs> we, we should stop him now. He's... <laughs> Has he not heard it before? He hurt himself, for sure. No idea. No idea. Still smiling. Can't take my eyes 
lover. <laughs> so, we all knew the big bit was coming. My God, there was a tension in that club that night. We were all waiting there. This one old woman said, she said, I'm not watching it. It's not fair. <laughs> Young chap hurt himself. She said, I'm not, it's a bit of your conscience, but I'm, I'm out of here. And if you want to watch someone get upset and, and, and do their... Uh... <laughs> God. So, got to the big bit. Da -da 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 we were on the edge of our seats. Da -da 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 -da. Da, 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 completely true. Da, 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 da. The old woman next to me was watching it like this. <laughs> da, 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 da. And I swear to you, this singer went. <laughs> You've been a brilliant crowd. Thank you very much indeed. God bless you. cleans up the stage. I'll probably have to. Let me say it quickly then, it's not fantasy, it's reality. Frank Skinner tonight, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs>